How is saving in Bitcoin different than investing in the S&P 500? Today, many people think the best way to save for the long-term future is by perpetually investing in an S&P 500 passive index fund. Ignoring the price or valuation you're paying for the top 500 companies in the U.S. and hoping they continue increasing over time. However, I'm not sure that's the best way to think about saving for your long-term future. First, historically, the S&P 500 has generated about an 8% annual return for the last 54 years. This might sound pretty good at face value, but the total supply of U.S. dollars in the banking system, M3, has also grown at about 8% per year for the last 54 years. So yes, the S&P 500 has done much better than many other long-term investments, but it has still only just tracked the money supply. And that makes sense. If you bought the S&P 500 in 1970, 54 years ago, 86% of the companies you initially bought no longer exist. You bought a few big winners and a lot of losers. Of course, it rebalanced over time, but you were perpetually buying and selling off losers. Also, over the last 54 years, the world has converged on U.S. large-cap equity markets as a primary form of savings. Individuals and investors all over the world, in Switzerland and Japan, regularly try to save wealth in the U.S. stock market. Will this last forever or will other countries' equity markets eventually begin to take market share back from the S&P 500? Right now, U.S. large cap equities are a very crowded trade and valuations are extremely high with the Schiller P.E. ratio of 36 today. This means you pay $36 for $1 of annual earnings for companies in the S&P 500. This sounds high because it is high, but it does make sense as to how we got here. The U.S. dollar is designed to debase, and it has debased at a fairly historic rate over the last four years. Everyone holds wealth in the S&P 500 because they know they can't save for their long-term future by holding dollars or long-duration bonds. There's been an increasing chase for yield, which has forced people to buy high-quality financial assets, no matter the valuation. But now enter Bitcoin, a new long-term savings technology. Its money supply is perfectly fixed, unlike the dollar, gold, or any other monetary tool ever used by humans. So now the opportunity cost of buying the S&P 500 is not just holding dollars, which everyone knows is a losing long-term bet. Now everyone's opportunity cost is holding Bitcoin, which is a new monetary technology that has a completely inelastic supply. No matter how high the price of Bitcoin goes, no amount of energy, time, or technology advancements can create more than 21 million Bitcoin. This is completely different from every other money and every other financial asset that has ever existed. So again, how is Bitcoin different than investing in the S&P 500? Well, by buying the S&P 500, you've just been tracking the money supply. Why not buy the money that has a fixed supply? you'd likely get at least the same return with no counterparty risk and no execution risk. And of course, if Bitcoin adoption as savings technology continues to grow, then you'll likely outperform the S&P 500 like it has been doing so for the last 15 years. Thanks for watching everyone and see you next time.